shoulder dislocations. Surgical anatomy, you can see here the bony anatomy of the shoulder area. It includes the humerus and the scapula. You can also see the important muscles attached to the shoulder area including the supraspinatus, subscapularis, and long head of the biceps. Shoulder dislocation is dislocation of the glenohumeral joint. You can see the glenoid cavity as a part of the scapula and the labrum is attached to the glenoid. The labrum reinforces the glenoid cavity and acts as a bumper within the joint capsule of the shoulder joint. The axillary nerve is the nerve that's commonly injured in shoulder dislocations. It arises from the posterior cord and supplies the teres minor and deltoid muscle and the skin over the shoulder area. Injury of the axillary nerve will result in numbness in the shoulder area. and weakness of shoulder abduction. The shoulder joint is the most commonly dislocated joint in the body. Types of shoulder dislocations include anterior dislocation and posterior dislocation. Anterior dislocation is the most common dislocation. The mechanism is abduction extension and external rotation of the arm. Here you can see the mechanism of abduction, extension, external rotation that leads to the dislocation and the arm will be in a position away from the body, often overhead with the arm rotated backwards. This is a normal shoulder joint without dislocation. You can see the biceps tendon anteriorly. This anterior dislocation is often found with combination of a labral tear and greater tuberosity fracture or fracture of the humeral head called hill sachs lesion. Bankert lesion it is a tear of the anterior inferior labrum of the glenoid rim. Bankert lesion may be associated with a high recurrence rate of dislocation, especially in patients younger than 30 years of age. Bankert lesion can occur either as fibrous or bony. In the elderly patient, dislocation of the shoulder is often associated with a cuff tear. You can see here in the elderly patient how the cuff is torn. When the head of the humerus impacts against the anterior inferior edge of the glenoid, it causes flattening of the humeral head. We call it a hell sex lesion. Treatment of anterior shoulder dislocation, immediate reduction. Dislocation is ruled out or reduced if the patient can touch the opposite shoulder. Immobilization of the shoulder remain controversial in duration and position of the immobilization. Patient will be unable to lift the arm Surgery usually reserved for patient with recurrent instability. Posterior dislocation of the shoulder, usually associated with scissors or electric shock, and is often missed on radiograph. About 50% of the cases are missed. With posterior dislocation of the shoulder, there is a lack of external rotation movement of the shoulder joint. Posterior dislocation will dislocate the humeral head posteriorly. Only 5% of shoulder dislocations are posterior. This is the normal external rotation of the shoulder 
without the presence of posterior dislocation. The most reliable sign of posterior dislocation of the shoulder is the presence of shoulder being locked in internal rotation. You can also see reverse Bankert lesion or reverse Hilsex fracture or lizard tuberosity fracture with posterior dislocation of the shoulder. Axillary radiograph is the best to diagnose posterior shoulder dislocation. You can see two axillary views. On the left, a normal one without dislocation. On the right, it is a posterior dislocation of the shoulder. How do I know that? Because the coracoid is anteriorly and the humeral head is going posteriorly. Inferior subluxation of the shoulder, often confused with shoulder joint dislocation. Axillary radiograph views is normal in these patients. That inferior subluxation of the shoulder is usually caused by deltoid muscle atony, weakness of the deltoid muscle. And the treatment is usually physiotherapy, electric stimulation. All my videos and this video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.